Hi, my name is Byron Martin here at Logi Screenhouses, and today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite fruiting shrubs, the miracle berry or miracle fruit. And this is um, Cincephalum dulcificum that comes from tropical West Africa. It's a small growing shrub, probably to six to eight feet in its natural habitat, it, and does very well as a container plant in greenhouses homes, sunny windows, or in tropical areas obviously planted in the ground. So the interesting thing about this plant is it produces these um, round red berries which when you eat them change your taste buds so that anything sour tastes sweet and it's a reaction to your taste buds changing some proteins. So it would be things like lemons turn sweet, pickles turn sweet, dill pickles, sour pickles turn sweet, dry wine turns sweet, and fruit that you might eat such as an apple or a pineapple which is already sweet increases the sweetness tenfold. So a lot of fun to um, eat these and share these with friends and family. And as far as the plant goes, it's quite easy to grow. Here's a young plant that is about 18 inches in full fruit and in flower right now. Their fruiting season for us is generally more in the summertime, but they can fruit throughout the year. When growing them, it's recommended that we use an acidic mix. And our mix here that we use is a mixture of peat moss and perlite 50-50. One thing about the root systems is they're very strong. They really don't have a lot of problems with root diseases, which we find in many container plants. As with all container plants, the miracle berry is going to need to be fertilized and they do have sensitivity to high salt levels meaning that if we uh, grow them dry and we give them fertilizer particularly salt fertilizers you can actually burn the leaves so the rule of thumb is generally if you're going to feed them make sure the soil is damp or moist during that period if it's dry give them a drink let them hydrate a little bit and then add your fertilizer they actually grow very well under partial sun or full sun. That would be an east, west, south exposure, summertime outdoors. Our recommendation is to keep them above 60, although they can go below that without any harm if um, environmental conditions or uh, home conditions subject them to that for short periods, but generally we try to keep them at 60. And critical in allowing them to fruit is to make sure that these uh, flowers or the stems are wiggled and brushed Normally, they are pollinated by wind, the wind movement, or something that rustles the leaves. So in a home situation, during the sunny time of day when they're in bloom, you just need to go through and wiggle the plant and do that as frequently as you can to allow this fruit to set. The plants actually can grow to four, five, six, seven, eight feet, but with pruning, you can actually maintain them at pretty much any size you want. This is up to flowering and fruiting size. We would simply prune the tops out of this um, as it expanded if we were trying to keep it smaller. And these side branches will very easily fill out um, once we push the plant down with a little bit of pruning. So to get the effect, you simply pick the berry off, put it into your mouth. It has an interesting uh, sweetness to it. Not objectionable, actually quite desirable and there's a large seed inside and what you do is you just chew the pulp off the seed and allow that to get onto your tongue and then eat your sour uh, food or your uh, sweet sour food and notice the change. The effect lasts for probably about a half an hour. If you ate a handful of these it would probably last even longer. Thank you for watching today. There's a little bit of information on how to grow the miracle fruit. It's quite an easy plant to manage and gives you an abundance of these small round fruit that can um, delight your taste buds.